As of two hours ago, Obsidian released the version 1.4 Insider build. So this is for Insider users only, but they've added properties to Obsidian. At the moment, you'll see something that looks like this at the top of your file. It's often called YAML or front matter, maybe metadata, and this is what it will look like. But now, if I come to the top right, click on the three dots, you can see I'm in source mode. If I go to live preview, it then shows properties. I can click on any of these items and drag the property up and down. When I left click on the icon, I can change the property type, which I'll go through in a minute. I can cut, copy, paste, or remove the property. If I hold shift and then select multiple properties, I can then right click and change all the properties to a certain type, cut, copy, paste, etc. If I open up a second file and let's hold shift and select all of them, I can then copy. So control C, I come over here, control V, it then pastes all of that property information into the file. It's so nice. And if I go to the editor tab, you can see there's uh, actually another button. So it says show file properties. If I tick this off, you can see all the files have now disappeared. All the file properties anyway, they've disappeared. So they don't show inside of the file. So I can type things and you can type all the way down the file, but it doesn't show the properties. But if I tick it on, I can then show all the properties. And if I don't want to toggle them, I can toggle them shut or toggle them open. So I can see all of them, none of them, or not even the drop down. But if I turn the properties off, how am I meant to see the properties? Well, they've added commands for that. Going into the command palette, you can see we've got properties show all properties. And this gives you a list of every single property that's in the vault. And it acts very similar to the tags pane. So you can see the tags pane, we've got two tags in here. Inside of here, it shows all of the properties. And when you click on the property, it then adds that into the search. So you can know which file's got which. This one's in the example file. And then the show properties file is this one that I've got down here. So this is all of the properties. This is just the file that I have active. So that is when I click on this one, this is the active file. These are the properties in that file. If I click on the second file, these are the properties in this file. Uh, yeah, there are some visual things, but it's just been released. So <laughs> I'll let them off with that one. But that's not all. We also have an add file property hotkey. Now this is the default one, control colons. That's my template one. So I'll probably change it and then clear file properties. But if I come into the file, and push that hotkey you can see it's now letting me edit or add a new property i could just push the button add in here or push the button add over here it's entirely up to me but now let's have a quick look at the property so alias is a default property css classes is another default property and tags is also a default property so when you click on them and you click on the icon you can't actually change the property type so if I create a new file, you can see there's no properties in here at the moment. If I push that hotkey, it lets me add a property, push alias. Now it has an alias property, but I can't change it to any other type because it's only letting me put an alias in. And for those unfamiliar with aliases, if I have an alias in here for app, you can see it's been entered and this is Obsidian app. I can look for Obsidian app or app. So when I go to the quick switcher, control O and type in app, you can see there's the alias app and there's the file obsidian app. And then that's the actual file name. So that's what an alias is. And then if I come in here, it gives me a drop down of the other alias and the other file. So this actually collects all of the different entries for aliases, which can be useful if you've got different aliases across your vault. But let's say I want there to be an obsidian alias, I need to push enter. So you can see at the moment, it's not actually entered in as a, an option. It's just still in text. So push enter. Now I have app and obsidian as different aliases for this one file. So quick switcher type obsidian. There's the Obsidian alias for the Obsidian app file. And then if I type in app, there's the app alias for the Obsidian app file. Let's add another property. We're going to add the tags property and it's come up with the two tags I already have, which are the two tags inside of here. So again, auto completing, which is very nice. And if I click on the icon, you see I can't actually change the type of the property. If you try and change the name of the tags property, you can see what it's done is it's changed the property type. And now because it's a list property, I can't actually put it back into a task property yet. I'm imagining there's gonna be another way to do this, but that's currently what's happening. So if we go add property, add tags again, there we have the tags property back and there's the awesome tag that we have in. I'm going to click on things, drag that down, add property. And then the other property that is specific is CSS classes. Now this is only useful if you actually use CSS classes. I do use them in my library setup, which I'll leave a link to the video in the top right, but CSS classes, you can then add text in so I use cards and that would be the information put inside of this property this property type is a list so I'll type in a list and that is shown by the dashes with the dots next to it and you can see it's already brought up the other option so auto complete suggestions from the other list 
items we have inside of the example file. So first thing, second thing, third thing, it's actually showing up here so I can add that in there. Let's add another property. This time we're gonna go with text. And again, we've got the autocomplete. That's the other text that I brought in from the other file, but let's just remove some things in there. Now we've got, I can write whatever I, and when I go to the second file, let's add a text property. And I click in here, we then have the two auto suggest completions. The checkbox is what you would expect. Instead of it saying true or false, it's actually a tick box that you can tick like complete or not, which is very nice. It looks a bit big at the moment, but like I say, we'll let the developers off for that because this has literally just been released. Then we have a number and the number does exactly what you would expect. It doesn't let you type in any letters, so it only lets you type in numbers. And just for clarity, any of these properties that are not specifically those three that I mentioned, the tag, the aliases or the CSS classes, you can add whatever name to the property type you want. It's just the type that's actually limiting what can go into the value. Then the last two is the date and time. And if we have a look in this original file, we've got a date that's been added. So if I click on the date icon, you then have a, a date selector you can go to today and then clear it or in the time, we've got the exact same, but we've got a time picker on the side. And something the daily note or journal people will like is you see the date property, there's a link on the side. So if you push on the link, it opens the file that has the, the actual date on it. So you can go directly to the daily note. So you don't need a link inside of the property because the date file just does that for you or the date property, sorry does that for you. And one change with properties that's actually something you couldn't do previously is you can actually have a link inside of properties. So this goes to the same place. It goes to the example file. But when I come into here, you can see I can change the link. So I'm going to link it to the second file. And now I have a link to the second file. I can push on it and it takes me to the file. And if I say link, let's go back to the example file. It's linked inside of the properties, which is really nice. Now, if I add a link inside of the Obsidian app to the example file and go back to the example file, you can see it doesn't go backwards and forwards. It doesn't give you the, the backlinks, reciprocal backlinks, i.e. directional, but it's still going to appear inside of the backlinks panel. So all of the linking is there as you would expect. Now, there were other improvements and things that were fixed inside of this update as well. I'll leave a link in the description for you to find out more, but I feel like the properties is the big thing here.